Welcome to the next part of the introduction section. In this part, we'll continue our discussion of patterns and frameworks, outlining how they're used throughout Android to improve the structure and functionality of the concurrency and communication middleware used by its applications and services. Android's concurrency and communication frameworks and applications of these frameworks are designed, implemented, and integrated in accordance with many Gang of Four and POSA patterns. The most essential patterns used in Android's frameworks appear in the POSA books, which isn't surprising since these books document fundamental concurrency and communication patterns. For example, the monitor object pattern synchronizes concurrent method execution to ensure that only one method at a time runs within an object. It also allows an object's methods to cooperatively schedule their execution sequences, as described at this link. Android applies this pattern to implement the linked blocking queue class in the Java Util concurrent package, which provides a synchronized list of linked nodes that enqueues and dequeues elements in first in, first out, or FIFO order. The thread specific storage pattern allows multiple threads to use one logically global access point to retrieve an object that's local to a thread without incurring locking overhead on each object access, as described at this link. The Android looper class applies this pattern by using a Java thread local object to ensure only one looper is created per thread, as described in these upcoming videos. The command processor pattern packages a piece of application functionality, as well as its parameterization in an object, to execute in another context, such as a later point in time, in a different process, in a different thread, etc., as described at this link. The Android Hammer framework applies this pattern to enable code in a background thread to post a runnable command that's enqueued and processed later in the user interface thread, as described in these upcoming videos. Android also applies this pattern to its intent service, which handles asynchronous requests, expressed as intents, on demand in a background thread of a service. The active object pattern defines the units of concurrency on a component to be requests for service. These service requests are processed in a different thread than the client thread that invoked the request, as described at this link. The Android Hammer framework applies a variant to this pattern to enable a client in one thread to send messages to a handler running in another thread, as covered in these upcoming videos. Android also applies this pattern via its binder communication framework, which uses messengers to enable message-based interactions across processes. The half-sync, half-async pattern decouples asynchronous and synchronous service processing in concurrent systems by introducing two layers, one for asynchronous service processing and one for synchronous service processing. These layers communicate via one or more synchronized queues and simplify concurrent programming without unduly reducing performance, as described at this link. The Android async task framework applies this pattern to allow one or more background threads to block synchronously while processing long duration operations and then pass the results via a queue to the user interface thread, which only performs short duration, non-blocking, or asynchronous operations, as discussed in these upcoming videos. The broker pattern connects clients with remote objects by mediating invocations from clients to these objects while encapsulating the details of the underlying interprocess communication mechanisms, as described at this link. Android applies the broker pattern to support object-oriented remote procedure calls between activities and services running in different processes. The broker pattern is actually a pattern language that applies many other Gang of Four and POSA patterns, as described in these books. Although the Gang of Four patterns don't focus on concurrency and communication per se, these patterns are applied in many object-oriented frameworks, including the Android concurrency and communication frameworks. For example, the template method pattern provides a skeleton of an algorithm and a method deferring some steps to subclasses, as described at this link. The Android handler thread class applies this pattern to allow subclasses to create their desired handlers by overriding the onlooper prepared hook method as shown in this upcoming video. The strategy pattern defines a family of algorithms, encapsulates each one, and makes them interchangeable so that clients and algorithms can vary independently, as described at this link. The Android async task framework applies this pattern to configure which type of executor is used to run async tasks, which can be serialized or run in the thread pool, depending on the designated strategy, as described in this upcoming video. 
The factory method pattern provides an interface for creating an object, but leaves the choice of the object's concrete type to a subclass, as described at this link. The Threadpool Executor class in the Android Async Task Framework applies this pattern to designate the subclass of Thread Factory used to create a thread whose name encodes the unique async task number, which serves as a debugging aid, as shown in this upcoming video. The frameworks in Android are built using some of the Java concurrency mechanisms in the Java Util Concurrent and Java Util Concurrent Locks packages covered in an upcoming section. In addition to the patterns outlined above, Android's concurrency and communication frameworks and the underlying Java mechanisms upon which they're built also apply many other patterns such as monitor object, proxy, guarded suspension, thread safe interface, future, bridge, adapter, and iterator, as discussed throughout this MOOC. In summary, Android applies many POSA and Gang of Four patterns to help improve the structure and functionality of its concurrency and communication frameworks, as well as the applications and services built using these frameworks. These techniques, tools, and methods codify software design and architecture best practices in the form of systematically reusable implementation artifacts. Some of these patterns and frameworks focus on Android's middleware layers, whereas others focus on writing applications and services. Regardless of their scope, these patterns and frameworks help developers on the Android platform be more productive and write better quality software by allowing them to focus on their business logic at whatever layer of the Android stack they deal with rather than wrestling with low-level, tedious, and error-prone concurrency and communication details. A great deal of the success of the Android platform stems from its pattern-oriented, framework-based architecture. Since Android's largely available as open source, it's an ideal environment for learning about and experimenting with these powerful forms of systematic reuse. I therefore strongly encourage you to download the Android source code available at this link. We'll analyze many examples from this code base throughout the rest of this MOOC.